That one by Steve Molesky is hot off the presses because he was just <laughs> writing it down on a napkin, took a picture of it, and sent it to the folks at MassiveSports.com. That's some good writing there that's on MassiveSports.com, <laughs> Rob. Uh, that's that's some good stuff. That's what I hear. How are you, man? Oh, yeah. I'm good. I'm good. Now, the Orioles <laughs> made some changes in the baseball operations department today. They did. They did. And a key hire here, as uh, the Orioles added today, Matt Blood as director of player development. And so they did some reshuffling within op the baseball ops department. You can see the titles there. But Matt Blood is a pretty key hire here. He's director of player development. As it says, going to spearhead the recruitment of staff, technology, player development strategies throughout the minor leagues. Kent Qualls remains on in his key role as director of minor league operations. Matt comes from the Texas Rangers. With a very good resume, he uh, is bringing in some real experience here. A young guy, bright, you know, energetic guy who worked with USA Baseball when they had some great programs, and he worked with some elite young talent there. So uh, that's a key position. And uh, Mike Elias told us with some of these, uh, you know, non-renewals of staff that there were going to be players, uh, new people hired, and they may emerge with more people in baseball operations before it's all over with. We're seeing a lot of changes in the last two weeks up at the top and scouting. We kind of expected this. We didn't know when it would happen, but when you come in with a new regime, you you, you got to kind of custom make things for yourself. Well, the timing uh, is kind of what dictated this. I mean, Michael I started last year in November. It was kind of after hiring season. He inherited some staff, and he inherited some really good people, and he said as much. And uh, one reason the Orioles took a leap up in, in the farm system rankings this year were some people who aren't coming back. But Mike has to be allowed to bring in his own staff, be on the same page with everybody he hires. And so, I mean, this is a good thing in terms of a general manager being allowed to bring in who he wants yes. to work with, uh, in what roles he wants to work with them. And as Mike Elias has pointed out a few times, Rob, two 100 law seasons back to back dictate change. So it's hard. It's not easy. Good people are leaving. They'll go on to other things we know because they're good people. And uh, some good ones are coming on board. All right. The Orioles made a big jump in the minor league rankings, uh, largely because of the 2019 draft. They're going to have a top three pick again in 2020. How much higher do we expect them to go? Well, they moved to number nine this year. It was pretty impressive. Uh, they were in the 20s, and this is the Baseball America organizational rankings, and the Orioles went to number nine. It was a big leap. And I think uh, Adley Rutschman was a big part of that. Obviously, you get a player who jumps right into the top 10 in baseball. Some say top five. Some say maybe number one. So, I mean, that pulls everything up. So that was big. And the Orioles will get another high pick, you know, second or third, it's looking like right now, for next year. So that player, whoever he turns out to be next June, will pull those rankings up. So I think there's room for them to go a little higher, Rob. And I think, truly, if Mike Elias wants to build and is able to build what he calls the elite talent pipeline, you're going to want to be in that top five farm system. You're going to want to have a farm system with talent and depth talent so you can bring it to win and talent and depth that you might even be able to trade some of it to bring other pieces to win so this is what teams like Houston the Yankees and others over the years have done with their farms all right if you guys don't know Steve Molesky has his finger on the pulse of the Orioles minor league so you've seen these guys come up through the ranks give me your most improved minor league hitter I'm going with Cedric Mullins based on mm. what he did late in this year. You've been talking him up a lot lately. He is really, I mean, this is off of Batansis, I believe, and this is a bolt to right center field in Bowie. And at the end of the year, Cedric Mullins had it going. He finished the year with a 16-game on base streak. In eight playoff games for Bowie, he hit 353. He was scoring runs. He was stealing bases. He was running balls down in the gap. He went from a player that was given center field, essentially, Lost it, went to AAA, didn't hit much there, went back to AA, and kind of had to start over, Rob. And they really worked with uh, his hands there. His, his hands were, you know, the load, as they call it, to get you to the pitch where the timing wasn't working for him. Mm -hmm. So they did some quieting of his hands, some, li some little mechanics work with him. And the guy at the end of the year looked like the guy the Orioles expected at the beginning of the year. So don't cross him off your depth chart for 2020 just yet. I'm not saying the Orioles don't need hitters, but they need pitching a lot. And they need these guys to get better to come up to the majors. Who was the most improved pitcher? To me, it's Alex Wells, who this year proved he can get out at double A, which is very impressive. 
This kid throws 87 to 90. He does not throw the ball by you, but he hides the ball, as you can see, a little bit. He's got a little deception uh, with the left-hand delivery. He's got good secondaries. You see it there, down and in, and he just knows how to pitch. He's not afraid to go inside on hitters. He pitched a huge game for Bowie in the playoffs, had him on the cusp of winning game three, and then that goofy uh, stolen base cost him. But, I mean, Rob, he went from a 3-4-7 ERA at Frederick to 295 at Bowie. 270 average against a 236, 130 whip to 107. He went up to the Eastern League, which has a lot of good talent, a lot of good hitters. And if you can do it in Double A, you might be able to do it in Baltimore. And there were scouts who doubted uh, very much that 87 to 90 would get out in the Eastern League. And I had some doubts. And Alex Wells quieted those doubters this year. And the kids got a lot of poise and fearlessness, as his manager Buck Britton said. A pretty impressive year. Okay, great fencer, finally healthy. What kind of impression has he made? Big, big. This kid was at uh, Single A Del Marva this year and did a great job. He is on the comeback. I mean, he had Tommy John surgery in April of 2016, and I think it impacted two or three years. But this year, the stuff returned. And yes, he's a little old for that league because of the injury situation. But look at the stats he posted. A sub-2 ERA at strikeout rates, tremendous. The velocity started to come back. He's 92-95. He has a hammer curveball, as we saw. And so it was a good year for Gray Fenter to pitch an entire year at Delmarva. They can move him fast later. They just need him to get healthy, get the stuff back. And don't forget this kid. He was a big overslot signing, a seventh-round draft pick the same year they drafted Mountcastle and D.J. Stewart, who got a million dollars where the slot was like a little over 100. So, I mean, they really like this kid out of high school, and I think they really like him after the year he had at Delmarva. Steve Oleski, MassesPoints.com. Got an idea for your next blog. Oh, your yeah? Your field trip to Ove's Extra pregame. Ooh. Right in the side of the box. Behind the scenes. What's right Rob Long really like? Yeah, no, on second thought, don't write that. <laughs>